Carl, there's a word that's bandied out in society. I've heard it from my, even from my young adult kids. They've asked me years and years ago, dad, have you heard of MK ultra MK ultra mind control? Never heard of it when I was growing up, uh, probably about 10 years ago. I think I started, may, may have read one or two articles, uh, a quick definition. Then I want to get your take, Kyle. Have you, have you ever, ever seen this, uh, you know, live and in living color in front of you, uh, in, in a case, uh, do some of these people become cases? Here's a, just a one paragraph definition from, from the internet it says MK ultra or project MK ultra was an illegal human experimentation program designed and undertaken by the U S central intelligence agency, CIA. Intended to develop procedures and identify drugs that could be used in interrogations to weaken individuals and force confessions through brainwashing and psychological torture. It began in 1953 and was halted in 1973. MKUltra used numerous methods to manipulate its subjects' mental states and brain functions, such as the covert administration of high doses of psychoactive drugs, especially LSD, and other chemicals without the subject's consent. They use electroshocks, hypnosis, sensory deprivation, <clears throat> isolation, verbal and sexual abuse, and other forms of torture. Kyle, have uh, to me, it seems, I mean, when I just read that paragraph there, it seems if somebody would be uh, subjected to some of these uh, MK Ultra methods, this would probably open himself up to the diabolical. Have you ever seen a case like this? Yeah, we're familiar with, uh, yes, uh, the short answer is is yes. These um, individuals, because of their experiences, are extremely um, unstable psychologically, and they do not do well with regard to um, possession. So they're, what I mean by that is they're very seldom a target uh, of possession, but they are very uh, controllable and very um, damnable, if you want to use that word, uh, through the lighter methods of obsession, uh, just simply because of their uh, impaired mental state as a result of the programming. There's a, I think this warrants a general instruction in regard to mind control and to programming. Um, and, and if you'd like, um, we can take a little bit of that time, but I think yeah, to yeah. do some foundational, okay, so we'll do some foundational education for your audience because yep. this is much more uh, prevalent than we think. So MK Ultra, um, it's, it stands for mind control. Um, MK, the, the K, um, <laughs> uh, interestingly enough, anytime you see the word uh, a C replaced with a K, then that's a pretty good indicator that there is a deviancy that appears to be normal. So uh, when you see the word magic, magic yes. spelled with a K instead of a C, okay, there's a little diabolical there. You'll mm -hmm. hear people who refer to America spelled with a K. Uh, um, yep. pay, yeah, pay, pay attention because that's a little hoof print, if you will. That's a little diabolical hoof print that lets you know there's an evil deviancy going on uh, and all is not what it appears. Got it. Okay. Makes that sense. having been <laughs> that having been said, so mind control essentially is ha happens on three levels: of, uh, primary, secondary, and tertiary, or a one, two, three. What mind control is dependent upon is altered state, an altered physiological and or psychological state, because what mind control is dependent upon is irrational habituation. So if you're looking at Thomistic psychology, the irrational faculties or the faculties which occur below reason are the faculties associated with the body. The reasonable quality are the faculties of intellect and will. And these are the higher faculties reserved to the soul. So in order to, to affect mind control there, you have to work on the psychology and physiology uh, of the human. So level one mind control, the altered state there is things like sleep de deprivation, food deprivation, starvation, stimulation of the, uh, of this, the external senses. And a lot of what MK did um, was it, it started, it brought forth 
things out of the Nuremberg trials that were discovered that the Nazis were doing in the experimental population they were experimenting on was the, or the Jews. But there's an even further precedent because what the Nazis did was they accumulated a tremendous amount of knowledge in all kinds of areas, including torture, occult, mind control, etc. What's another example of mind control? Classic example of mind control, phase level one, is what was happening to the martyrs of Sebest. If you know that story, there were 40 Roman soldiers who were Christians. They marched them into a freezing pond, and they said, if you will come out and deny Christ, then we'll warm you up. So this is a form of mind control. Yes. It, you alter the That's wicked. Yeah, you alter the physiological. Well, that's exactly what was happening to the martyrs, and it is wicked. Yeah, yeah. And so you take the weakness and susceptibility of the flesh to affect the, um, the soul, the rational quality. And of the 40 martyrs of Sebest, if you'll remember, only one came out, and immediately one of the guards replaced him. And so martyrdom and the ordering of the intellect and will to suffering for a redemptive purpose is directly opposed to diabolical psychology. Mind control is dependent upon diabolical psychology or Uh fallen psychology. Mm. So. So level one is if I can make you tired, I can make you hungry, I can um, I can make you uh, I can weaken you some way, then I w- that's a level one, and you're susceptible to suggestion at that point. The suggestion was deny the Christ. So that goes directly against what they knew to be rationally true in their intellect and their will, and they held firm to it. So what would be a level two? A level two is a violence um, against the corpus. And so this would mean an injuring um, a, a, um, a St. Sebastian when they shot the arrows into him. Um, and so now we're upping it. We're taking it to a level two. So um, in satanic ritualistic abuse, what is happening is they're physically abusing the person and then they're uh, providing stimulation such as images um, to which the person now associates the pain with the image. So a good example of, of rational habitual, irrational habituation is Pavlov's dogs. And so he conditioned them by feeding them at the sound of a bell that the bell and food were associated. Well, that's not a universal association. It's a, actually an irrational association because nowhere does bell mean food. Kyle's doing a deep dive on MK Ultra and uh, giving us a, a threefold definition of mind control. Kyle, let me just ask you a question as you continue. You're, you're on level two. You had mentioned in the first segment that mind control is based on fallen psychology, right? I mean, secular psychologists, they use this now, correct? That's precisely right. Um, that is precisely right. And so they it call is it hypnosis, inversion. right? They, they call it hypnosis, correct? <laughs> yeah, hypnosis is certainly one form. Okay. Uh, it okay. is certainly one form, but it is an inversion of the um, faculties of the human person as delineated by St. Thomas. Mm. Okay, so you're on level two here. You're talking about the way uh, you mentioned the way SRA, uh, they physically abuse the person, they show them pictures. The victims now associate the the pictures with this pain, and this is how they control the mind. You want to continue on that? Yeah, and so it's the it's the understanding of irrational um, association or ir- irrational habituation. Now, I'm using ir- irrational it, in a Thomistic sense, meaning that it, it's happening in the lower faculties. And so, for instance, when you see um, when you see a film of a a mob a chaotic mob of of what looks like human hyenas swarming an Amazon truck in LA, Mm. then what you're seeing is, is a first incident that will become irrational habituation, which means that they're going to associate the Amazon logo and the truck with an, a looting opportunity. Got it. Wow. So that that makes sense. Yeah, I got it. Mm -hmm. And well, so that's a form of mind control. Well, the, well then the media is doing that to us right now because they show us pictures over and over again showing these anarchists, uh, 
you know, looting, looting stores, looting uh, huge, huge department stores. And uh, we saw what they did to cities and courthouses and police stations for two and a half years. And they were just trying to normalize it. You would have the anchors right in front of saying with a burning police station, they were saying, yes, uh, it's, it's mostly a peaceful gathering here. And so they're, they're psyopsing us. Now they're doing it through the telev- television and through the mainstream media. Now you're, that's exactly the point where I was headed, Jesse. You're two steps ahead. This is the societal application of MK Ultra as designed and articulated mm-hmm. by a guy named Dwight Cameron. Wow. So that's where we're at right now. And it was, <clears throat> that's it, where we're at correct. right now. And it was pioneered. It was pioneered in Nazi Germany. Well, that says a mouthful. God help us. I mean, very simply. Well, very simply, we're seeing what we're seeing, and we're not seeing what they don't want us to see. In other words, it, they they basically just control what they control the information, the uh, the New World Order, the globalists, whatever you want to call them, the Great Reset people, uh, you know, the Billionaire Boys Club. They they control the communication. They control the the narrative, and, and also. Uh, it, it reminds me, do you remember, Kyle, during, uh, I think, uh, the initial assault against Iraq under under Bush, where the uh, the Taliban, they had <clears throat> they had a, the guy that we used to call the minister of propaganda. You would see the Taliban getting shellacked by American troops and and, uh, you know, their their places being destroyed. And uh, they're, they had a guy, uh, I forget his name, but he would come out in the news. He'd be putting, he'd be saying, oh yeah, we, we are winning. We are winning the Americans. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, the Americans are in retreat and you can see right behind them, you know, American bombs are just destroying, you know, half, half of Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, I forget what his name was. I think they were, they would call him. Uh, uh, but again, that was, that's kind of an, what you're talking about, you know, Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. Move on. Move on. When you see, like again, a, a burning police station right behind you, people jumping on top of police cars, and you got a news anchor saying, "Well, uh, the, uh, the, tonight uh, in uh, in uh, Oakland, California, it's mostly peaceful." That, that's that's uh, MK Ultra at a at a wide level, correct? Correct. Now, there's an element of the third level that we need to that we need to talk about. And so MK Ultra, Ultra meaning the ultimate form of mind programming. So now we've talked about the stimulation, societal stimulation, as well as personal with regard to MK Ultra. But what's necessary is to remember is to alter the state, to alter the, the state of the person. And so that's either done level one, two we talked about is violence. Now three, three is uh, an altering of the state through chemicals and drugs and that's the portion of mk ultra that is most discussed on the internet and elsewhere and that is the understanding we need to understand that there were large groups of population that were administered military as well as civilian population that were administered hard psycho um, hallucinogenic drugs the united states for four years was the largest purchaser of lsd yeah, and so, oh, wow. And LSD is one of the intrinsically evil substances because it has no curative value. So when we talk about intrinsically evil, methamphetamine is an example of an intrinsically evil substance. The tools of abortion are an example of an intrinsically evil object because they can't be used for anything else. And the, the drugs have no curative value. So actually they're not a drug. What they are is a potion. They are a, um, a spell. And so that is the way they work, is they alter the reality, the person's mindset, so that they make a decision that has a spiritual implication. Let me say that again. This is the definition of a spell. So that when, um, the, when a, a witch or a wizard or a sorcerer casts a spell, it involves the ingestion of something that alters the state of the person, the mental state, and they make a decision. They participate in a grave, an act of grave matter, which will have a spiritual consequence. What that means is when they sin, even in that altered state, 
now that they're wide open to the demon, they're wide open to possession, they're wide open to these things, um, this influence. That's simply the way it works. Interestingly enough, and you'll remember it, we're both of an age that we remember. Do you remember the song Love Potion Number 9? Yes, sir. Yep. Yep. Like India, got a bottle of Indian ink, mixed it up in my sink. It, it's interesting. That is exactly uh, uh, uh. <laughs> the, mm. the sequence and methodology of how a spell works on us. What's an example of a spell? How about chemically induced contrails? How about RNA vaccines? Mm. How about anything we... Yep. Now you're seeing it. Wow. What's the name of that song again? I'm going to look at the lyrics later on today. Love Potion number nine. <laughs> ritual, ritual, have it up for us and probably play it at the break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll tell Richard if he can get it. We can play it at the break. That'd be good. I want. I, want, I definitely want to hear the lyrics. So that's the way a spell works. It's, it's all, it's, it, in other words, uh, <laughs> Uh, they're telling us exactly what they're going to do to us. And uh, that song came out years ago. And it's funny. It's it, it, that's, that's the way Satan, the diabolical seems to work. They'll put something out years ago through the media. And then uh, people are calling it. Oh, that's a conspiracy theory. That doesn't happen. That's a conspiracy theory. And 10, 20 years later, here we are in living color. It's happening. Uh, like for example, that movie, Soylent Green, people were saying, Oh, come on. They're never going to do something like that. That's crazy. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of evidence uh, from from some um, very thoughtful thinkers th uh, that aborted baby fetal stem cells in the vaccines that could be again a form of soil and green, you know, maybe to a lesser That's extent. Precisely right. Yeah, we talked about it on one of these programs as a false Eucharist. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Hmm. <clears throat> and you know and what? So one of the, the What's sad, Kyle, is that our country was part of this uh, MK Ultra from the very beginning. It, it, well, I guess we borrowed it from Germany, right, from the Nazis, but I, I, we've probably perfected it here, correct? Well, that's exactly right. What we did, uh, what this Cameron fellow did, is he he was on part of the Nure Nuremberg Commission, and he reviewed all of the data, all of the research that was meticulously recorded. And he brought all of that forward, condensed it, made it applicable and made it socially acceptable. And then he was the author of the MK program. And then Helms destroyed all of that because when it became clear in 1973 that all of this was going to, under Gerald Ford, all of this was going to become open and public, exactly what had been done, then what happened was all of that was destroyed. Um, and all of those records, all of that stuff was de destroyed. Of course, that was before the digital age. And it was amazing. It was, you know, it was the Nazis went back and researched centuries into this whole idea of mind control, how to control populations, how to manipulate populations, et cetera. But this is all part of one world government. It, it's all part of that same movement. Hitler in Nazi Germany was an experiment by the, the Illuminati. Wow. The Illuminati is, uh, they're basically uh, tied at the hip uh, with uh, the Freemasons, aren't they? I mean, it's a, two secret societies. They have the same goal, a bunch of, uh, you know, woke, liberal, you know, power players uh, that are that are at the well, very least, both of them are at least Luciferian, right? I'm not saying the best way to say Luciferian. The best way to, uh, certainly Luciferian, but the best way to understand the Illuminati is this is 13 families. Oh, Freemason, Freemasonry is a construct of the Illuminati. So did Freemasonry, this did, whole idea, did, did they come from the Illuminati or who came oh yeah, before? Yeah, yeah, they're a front. They're essentially a front organization for the Illuminati. And, wow. Correct. Wow. Correct. Kyle, and you have you probably dealt with people that were trying to get out of Illuminati and uh, Freemasonry? Uh, in the last 20 years, you've probably run across some of those cases, right? Where people trying to get out and they become diabolically afflicted. Yeah, there. Yes, everywhere from security personnel at the Bohemian Grove to high-level practitioners. Um, and, it, and it's enough from around the world and they're telling the same story and they don't know each other. Truth has a way of coming out. 
and you, you can keep something hidden for several hundred years, but eventually it starts to come out. Um, what we're seeing very clearly is the agendas and manifestos, evil agendas and manifestos that were coming from um, Rockefeller and, and others. And, you know, I've told people for years, when they say you're a conspiracy theorist, I'm no theorist. Um, <laughs> you, you see what you see. And then when you're dealing with somebody who is possessed and here that demon is telling you the same thing that a demon in Spain is telling you one in Ohio is telling you the same thing. One in Spain's telling you with specificity about things that there's no way these people can know anything about. You got to kind of sit up and pay attention to that. 